Tis the season for donations, but make sure you be careful on who you're giving your money to. I sort of got away from me there at the end. In the past 10 years, Kids Wish Network has raised over $128 million. Yay! And $109 million was spent on solicitors. Oh. Still, that's a that's a sizable chunk left over, right? Only $3.2 million went in as direct aid. That is not even three cents for every dollar donated. Three cents. Disabled Police and Sheriff's Foundation. Now they've changed their name five times in the past 10 years for some reason, but in that time they've raised over $9 million. And 85% of that stayed with solicitors. Actual money going towards disabled officers or families of fallen officers less than $9,000 a year. So doing the math over the past 10 years, carry the two, that's about 1%, one penny for every dollar donated. One penny. Since 1998, Project Cure has raised over $65 million. They lobby Congress to educate the public on alternative treatments for cancer, Alzheimer's disease, and in the past 10 years, Project Cure has raised $51.4 million. And only $20.4 million was spent on solicitors. So you might be thinking 51, 20, that's more than half going to the charity. That's that's not a bad trade-off in this day and age. Oh no, because Project Cure's longtime president, Michael S. Evers, gets a $200,000 paycheck every year. And in 2011, the group spent 90% of all donations on fundraising. And that still wasn't enough to cover the fundraising. Oh, and it's not like 2011 was just some sort of weird fluke. For the past 16 years, Project Cure has been spending more on fundraising than it's been getting in donations. They are putting this nonprofit in debt. And by the end of 2011, Project Cure had run up a tab of about $3 million. Children's Charity Fund, a tremendous amount of their money goes towards fundraising and not actually helping children. Same goes for the Wishing Well Foundation and the Police Protective Fund. They just, they, they spend all this money on fundraising. They don't actually make a profit for the people that they're designed to help. A foundation could hire a telemarketer to actually get the job done and get the word out there. But when everything is said and done, they might owe the telemarketer more money than they brought in. And that happens with a lot of charities. Telemarketers are expensive. They're annoying, but they're expensive. They're really expensive. Sometimes the people running the charity are involved in a scam, but a lot of the times they just, they have no idea. But that's no excuse. The donors are still getting ripped off. Police, disaster relief, children with cancer. These are all triggers that people have and they want to help. And when these charities pop up and they're like, here, help the kids with cancer with these police dads who were affected by a tsunami, a normal person would be like, ah, take all my money. And I'm sure being in that it's the holiday season on social networking, you've seen these things pop up that are like, don't donate to this charity. This person makes this many hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and less than a nickel of your actual dollar goes to charity. Don't donate to this person. Don't donate to this person. And to that I say, before you donate, criticism. Criticism. And watch out for names of charities that actually sound like popular charities but aren't actually the popular charities. Criticism. So how do you donate wisely? Well, number one, crowdfunding is very risky. If there's a tsunami disaster, all of these charities popping up saying, here, donate us money, we'll get the money to these people right away, we promise, but you've never really heard of them. Before you donate money, look for a track record. The company has to have something backing it. Like, look at all these years of experience. Look how awesome we are. Now, give us money, you can trust us with it. If a nonprofit pops up saying that they're going to give money to these people affected by a disaster, A, if you've never heard of them, that's a red flag, and B, if there's not really much information about them online, that's another red flag. Now don't go immediately thinking that they are a scam, but if they're new to the game, they might not have the perfect administration, and it might take a really long time for your dollar to reach the people who need it. Bad administration is an Achilles heel to a lot of these new nonprofits. They just, they cannot get the money to the people affected quick enough, and that's a big problem. Some of my favorite charities include Disabled American Veterans. Their head honcho, who runs the whole thing, makes zero dollars. Zilch. St. Jude Research Hospital, 100% of all donation goes to these kids with cancer who have no insurance to pay for treatment. 100%. The Make-A-Wish Foundation. Once again, 100% of your donation goes to the special wish of a dying child. 
100%. Direct relief, 98.7% of all money donated either goes to help or goes to fundraising. And since fundraising and spreading awareness only takes up 0.5% of whatever's donated, nearly all of your dollar goes to, as the name states, give direct relief. Ronald McDonald houses say whatever you want about the food, but 100% of everything donated goes to housing parents who have critical children in the hospital. 100%. This is one of my favorite things to do over the holiday season. They have these trees, usually in malls. I'm sure they have them in other places, but I go to my mall for one. It's a tree that has, as ornaments, these little tags. The tags are either girls or boys. I went there and I picked up a boy, and you buy a present for him, so they have a present for Christmas. The one negative about this is that this card itself is not specific at all. I know that it's a boy, but I don't have an age. I don't have any sort of interest. And so for the past few days, I have been racking my brain trying to think of the perfect gift for this boy that I know nothing about other than that he's a boy. And today, I found it. Now, if you're watching this, you are very well aware that I am a nerd. So I figure I'm going to do something a little nerdy for this boy of whatever age and whatever sort of interests he has. Uh, that's, that's a pretty cool present for a little boy, right? Got three Iron Man suits of armor so he can play with his friends and it's a special, you can build 100 plus armor combinations. Gosh, I wish I was getting this for Christmas. <laughs> and look, he even lights up. So yeah. I'm pretty pleased with my decision. In the comments down below, let me know of a pro or con experience that you've had with a charity. I know there are plenty of great charities, but plenty of negative charities. So just let me know. I want to know stories. I want to know how they've affected you. I want to know what you're doing for this holiday season to make it special for another person. All right, I will see you later. Goodbye.